120, 480, we're talking electricity and it's some serious, serious stuff. Electricity is all around us and we have to make sure that we're safe when we're dealing with it. Electricity is the number one cause of fires. We can start a fire almost anywhere with electricity. We've got the heat, we've got the oxygen, and we've got the fuel source. Electricity doesn't just cause zaps and zings. It can actually cause loss of motor skills contributing to a slip or a fall. You might get a slight zap that's not going to stop your heart, but it's enough to make you fall down into an auger, uh, off of a ladder, off of a scaffolding. So we have to make sure that we can contain the electricity. Now, electricity is running through our plant in multiple different locations, and the only people that are going to be allowed and authorized to stop the flow of electricity and to lock it out are going to be your maintenance techs and your press operators. They're the only ones that are even allowed in this room. We want to make sure that if we're opening a panel, that we're using the left hand rule. We're keeping our face and body away from the panel when we open it. You're in there with a meter checking some things out and you have the, the meter plugged into the wrong socket or you're touching the wrong thing and you cause a spark. If you get a spark when you're dealing with 480, you could have the potential for an arc flash or an arc blast. And there's enough energy when one of those two things happens to blow up the whole situation, including you, the noise, the fire, the heat, the concussion. It's like a grenade going off. You're going to have shrapnel flying. It's one of the worst things that can happen to you working with electricity. So electricity is very, very dangerous. And one thing I want to leave you with is respect. Make sure that you at least respect electricity and respect the harm that it can do to you. When you're dealing with equipment that is modular or mobile, you've got to realize that your power sources are also going to be modular or mobile. You've got situations down here where we've got electrical cords that could easily get set out in the ways of port traffic, wheel traffic, foot traffic. When you break that outer jacket and you get to the live components, you could electrify a piece of machinery, you touch it, bam, you're done. You've got portable power and you've got permanent power. Your portable power or temporary power are going to be your plug-ins and your cords. You've got to make sure that when you're looking at your plug-ins and your cords, that you don't have exposed conductors coming out of the plug. Now when you're talking about permanent power, you're talking about conduit. These are fixed sources of power. They have a nice protective casing over them, way better than just a regular electrical jacket. But the problem is, this conduit could get a crack in it. You've got to make sure. If you see any breaches in the outer jackets or the plugs in any of this electrical equipment, do not run the machine. Get maintenance over here, tag out that machine, keep people clear of it until that problem is getting remedied. Extension cords are very, very useful. They can take your power source from the wall, bring it another 15, 20 feet away for a temporary project. But remember, it is a temporary fix. Extension cords can also be dangerous if not used properly. Cuts and tears in the outer jacket could actually electrify you or a piece of equipment so that when someone touches it, they get electrocuted. If one of these extension cords is laying in water, we could electrify the whole area. We could short circuit things, blow fuses, uh, trip breakers. When you're dealing with water or situations that we may come in contact with the electrical source, you're going to want to use GFCIs. A GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, will sense the amount of current going in and returning from that receptacle. And it's going to trip at 5 milliamps, way, way less than the amount that could kill you. Another problem with extension cords is they can be a trip hazard. We have to make sure that we keep them in an area where we're out of foot traffic so there's not trips and falls. Another situation that you're going to find is when you have a cord that's run off of a portable appliance like this, you shouldn't have it wrapped around here. This motor is very, very hot. You do not want to have your power source, your extension cord wrapped around something that has a lot of heat. Sooner or later, it could melt through the outer jacket and cause us some serious, serious problems. So remember, we've got a lot of power running through these extension cords, but you've got to realize less than one amp can stop your heart, and that's all it takes. So make sure you're using these properly to keep you safe and keep the equipment running the way it should be.